That I'll do. I'm a comedian, you know. Yeah. Girls, how about making a line? Doing In a rehearsal hall 223, yeah. some dancers yeah. audition for the new Bob Crosby yeah. show. Okay, you got your shoes on? Yes, uh-huh. Good, Frank. And in Rehearsal Hall 224, the My Favorite Husband show has its first script reading. Joan Caulfield and Barry Nelson play the leads. Norman Tokar directs. Uh, uh, let's start reading from the top of six. George, what are you making such a big fuss about? They were all bragging about their husbands, and I wanted to brag too. So I told little sis. You couldn't think of anything nice to say about me. You must know some things, me, even if you had to go back a few years. When you first met me, you must have seen something about me you liked. Oh, well, sure. Well, what were those things? Well, when you first met me, what did you think? Let's see, I thought... George Cooper. Uh-huh. Well, that doesn't sound like much. Was enough to keep me awake now? Well, I don't think you can hope to base a long, successful marriage on... I disagree with you entirely. The divorce courts are filled with people who didn't have... Jack, would you start the model coming around, please? One of the major problems in television is one of space. It seems that no two things happen under the same roof. For example, in New York City, you find trucks beetling about from one building to another, carrying furniture, sets, and everything else. A cast may do its rehearsing uptown, and then the actual show may originate in midtown, and the props come from the east side, while the scenery has been built over in Jersey. Here, it happens under one roof. There is that central corridor which connects all the studios, and which in turn leads to the shop area. Now there's the roof coming up on the shop area. Would you stop it just about there, Jack? As we said a moment ago, that long corridor runs the full length of the building, down between the studios, and then finally down here. It reaches the carpenter shop, where the scenes and the sets are made, where they can make anything from a house to a hedgerow. And just adjacent to the mill is the paint shop, but instead of the painters moving up and down on ladders in the old-fashioned way, the painter just stands still and moves the scenery up and down past his brush. Nearby, the old sets and draperies are stored. And down the line from that is the prop storage department. Mr. Benny's safe and his Maxwell are both part of the curator's collection of props. Mr. Benny's famous Maxwell, when he gets to go on about 15 miles an hour, the hood starts popping. And the water shoots out, the radiator. And his headlamp falls off. Now, this, as you see, is a parking lot. This wall is, of course, black, which means that it is temporary and can be taken down in case expansion is decided upon. But underneath is something that is rather unusual if I can get it out. Right in here, we have the camera maintenance shop where all the cameras are checked and maintained. They have to be checked constantly. Down here, we have a machine shop for that same department. And when we were down in the camera maintenance shop, we thought to ask Bob Gross something that has interested us ever since we became involved in television. And that's the question, just how does a camera work? Well, Ed, it's our job to maintain all of the electronic equipment used on the station and uh, to repair anything that happens to break down. This happens to be a studio camera. And as you can see, it has easily over a thousand parts. This is the front end of the camera or the lenses more commonly known as the business end of the camera. On this side, we have the amplifiers. 
And this camera is exactly the same as your camera at home, with the exception of, instead of using film, it uses an image orthicon. Because it's rather difficult to remove the image orthicon, I have an exact duplicate here. This is an image orthicon. The lens focuses the picture on the front of this tube. And this tube is capable of changing the light intensities into electrical impulses. The electrical impulses go through this amplifier. And from here, it goes into the control room where the operator controls it for the best picture. This is a focus knob on the side of the camera. And by turning it, you bring the cam picture into focus. By these knobs, you can center the picture or electronically focus it and do many other operations. This handle in the center is connected to the turret in the front of the camera, and from this position, we can change lenses. You can go from a wide angle to a telephoto or whatever lens you happen to put on the front of the camera. That flicker you see on that tube is what we call a phasing bar caused by the fact that the pictures go through this television camera at the rate of 30 frames per second, while our movie cameras operate at 24 frames per second. This flicker on this camera and on this control room monitor does not go out on the air this way. The link letter show is still in progress, and it's nearing the time for the commercial. This is on film and originates from the Telesini department of Master Control. To this reporter, Telesini rooms always looked like the fire control center on a battleship. And we asked the chief engineer, Herb Pangborn, to show us around a bit. This projector is assigned to the Linkletter show, which is now in progress upstairs in Studio 41. The image is projected directly from the 35 millimeter projector to the mosaic of the tube in the film camera. Jeff here, our projectionist, is also assigned to stand by this projector to be sure that everything will work properly. Uh, I see it's just about time for this to roll, Jeff. I'll get out of your way. Thank you, Herb. While Telesini stands by to roll the film, the actual cue is given one floor above. Actually, it's in the control room of the Link Letter Show. One minute. Stand by, Telesini. One minute. Ready to come back on. What's your name? Michael Jackson. You look right at me, Michael, and we'll talk a little bit. How old are you, Mike? Five years old. Yeah? And uh, which do you like that, summer or winter? Either one is okay with me. <laughs> when, when summer comes, it's okay. When winter comes, it's okay. Either one of them is okay. Oh, yeah. Left. Stay two. Stand by the roll fill. Stand by the roll. Roll fill. Ready to take film? Take film. Hi, I'm Lorraine Day, and I'd like to tell you about the best idea I've ever found for buying nylon. It's a plan Lever Brothers has for buying nylons that almost half the price. One go to the address, three go to the place. Online. And you can get them too. Two Illinois shops. Finest quality nationally advertised. Ed, this is our uh, Telesini patch bay that I was telling you about. And this device was especially constructed for CBS, by CBS for our operation here at Television City. And what it actually does is to uh, provide and, and patch and connect the facilities in Telesini to be used by the studio requiring film. In one operation, by simply taking this plug and inserting it in this receptacle, 21 circuits are connected to the studio. And these include uh, video circuits, audio circuits, uh, projector start and stop controls, and the intercom system so that the studio and Telesini can talk back and forth. Now that we've had a look at the big picture of Television City and some of its mechanical marvels, we thought we might take a little look at what we call the little picture. And for that purpose, we have chosen the program called My Favorite Husband with Joan Caulfield. This is now the third day of rehearsal but the cast is still in the rehearsal hall. But now, on the morning of the show, the lighting men and the stage crew move in to set the stage. Right here where I am. Down a little. Over a little. All right, lock it off there. All right, hold it. All right, throw a half cello in, Tom. All right, boys, bring all that A-frame over here. All right, come on down with the top door a little. Judd, will you bring the ladder in and the... Uh Draperies from over there. Johnny, want to give him a hand? 
Next, they're ready for a camera rehearsal. The lights are preset, and they'll be controlled by that Eisenhower lighting board. You all set on the living room, Tommy? Yeah, I got it preset six, Ray. What time setting? Five seconds. Well, bring it on up then, will you, Tom? Yeah. Okay. Now the cellar and the exterior. They're on uh, manual. Oh, I hit them. All right. All right, bring in the hot stuff now. Coming in. We're ready for cameras. Yep, you got it. Uh, Barry and Joan, we're going to take that scene on the couch. Uh, and we're just going to block it now for cameras, so just take it easy and walk through it. Uh, just about where you are, and uh, you just hold it for a moment, we'll set the shots. Uh, uh, one, give me a, a close-up of Joan, and three, set up a close-up of Barry. Uh, two back here, uh, set up a nice, loose two-shot. That's just the way you have it, Bob, it's fine. Take it from I marry you because I love you, that's why. We're on three. Ready, one. Marry you because I love you, that's why. Take one. Ready, three. Then why didn't you say that? Take three. Could I say? Ready, one. I did C-Club, and I married my husband because I love him. Wouldn't that sound ridiculous? Take one. No, no more ridiculous than saying I did three. Oh, watch that bone. Ready, three. three. George, you're making such a big fuss about this. So you're not handy, so I told a little fib. Married to a girl five years, she can't think of anything nice to say about you. Oh, I could think of a million now. All right, now stand tight up with, with Joan as she crosses. So uh, hold them, the two of them as tight as you can. And Joan, be sure that you stay up. Uh, that's fine. I tighten up now. Okay, then she'll come back around the couch. All right, go from that spot. And stay up, Joan. You're kind. You're sweet. You're generous. You're good to my mother. Ready, three, waste two people. All right, follow her, follow her. That's right, hold them tight. Now tighten up, then. Uh, uh, tight on it. Hold it right here. Uh, keep going, Ben. I'll tell you when to stop. That's right. Right about there. Now, take it from, uh, um, uh, my, uh, I like you, I like you. Uh, you're back a little now, Ben. Dogs like you, I like you. I like you. I think you could have thought of something nice to say about me. I mean, even if you had to go back to the tighten up, girl. When we first met, there must have been something about me you like. Oh, sure. Well, what were those things? Oh, when you first met me, what did you think? Let's see. I thought... Start to go in, Curly. George Cooper. Mm. Huh? Mm. Doesn't sound like much. It was enough to keep me awake nights. I mean, you don't expect to build a long, successful marriage on... Huh? I disagree with you entirely. The divorce courts are filled with people who didn't have... Huh? And now you went even tighter, Curly. Let her drop out of the frame on the kiss. Yeah, well, uh... Do we have, uh... Huh? Huh? No. Another thing, I mean... Our pullback, follow them out. Well, there you had a glimpse of the inside of Television City. It's a fact that in theory, at least, an individual could come into the front end of this building with nothing but a pencil and an idea, and when he came out, he would have everything required for a complete television program. All of his lighting arranged, all of his conference with his script writers, the sets dressed, the costumes made, all the rehearsals done, so that in theory, while he moved from one end of that corridor to the other, the whole television program would be constructed and finally presented under one single roof. This is the first building ever constructed exclusively for television production on this great scale. For those of us who work in television, it's an opportunity and a challenge. We have the tools and the instruments with which to produce the best of which television is capable. During most of its history, television has been improvising, using theaters, old radio studios. Here we have, for the first time, an instrument at our hands that we can use. If we do not produce improving and superior programs from here, then the fault is ours and ours alone. Good night and good luck. This tour of CBS's Television City was produced by the staff of See It Now, directed by Edmund Scott with Jack Beck. Cameramen were Leo Rossi and Norman Alley. As with all See It Now programs, it was produced by Mr. Morrow and Fred W. Friendly.